What's up, incredible athlete? Welcome to our channel, Happiness Headquarters. We are really glad that you have clicked this video and joined us today. Lots of love and respect to yourself for that gesture. Now, let me put you up to speed with what we shall be doing today, which, my friend, is reacting together to videos. Good vibes videos that might blow your mind, crack your ribs, make you rethink reality, or even, my friend, make you learn something new. And all these videos, we shall be reacting to them with the intentions of spreading love, peace, honesty, and forgiveness to the whole world. And together, my friend, we can make that happen. You will benefit from these videos widely, my friend, because you get to see and understand how different humans live in different places of the world and what beliefs they might have. And now, my friend, before we even reach to that point, we react to those videos. It would be wise if we read from the Guide of Life or the Book of Wisdom, which, my friend, adds more wisdom to our lives every day as we go around our days. And, uh, hey, where is that place? Oh, uh, yeah. And our word of today comes from, uh, from, Abadance from the book of Abadance, uh, Abadance from the Quran, aka Al Qadar. Al Qadar, this is what it says In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, to you have we granted the fount of Abadance. Therefore, to your Lord, turn in prayer and sacrifice. For he who hates you, he will be cut off from the future hope. Hey, it's uh, wonderful, my friends. Hit that like button, subscribe, and join us on our mission. Let's give thanks to our Creator Plus. Thank you, mighty Lord Father, for this moment, for this day, Father, for your wonderful soul that you've joined us today with, Father. All glory and honor belong unto you. Thank you for the videos that we have today that have been compiled for us. All glory and honor belong unto you. Guide us, dear Lord, as we react through them, Father, and fill us with your wisdom. Bless our fruits, our animals, and this soul watching, Father, impact their lives positively. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Let's dive in, wonderful soul. Good vibes all the way. Allegedly, if you... Hi, here's the mixture. It's disgusting. <laughs> it didn't look like it did in the video, but we're just going to try a little piece of oak. Dip it in there. Swish it around. Let that sit. And then we're going to try a little bit of uh, black cherry. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what it looks like after it soaks in. Holy sh**! <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute. Oh, my lord. Oh. <laughs> When people insult you, notice what they criticize. If they attack your intelligence, it's because you make them feel inferior. If they point out flaws in your appearances, it's often driven by jealousy. And if they question your morals, it means your integrity makes them feel inadequate. When I was younger, I'd always experiment using Complete. stuff that we had at home. Waste and I'm sure it drove my parents crazy. But I just what I'm about to show you today uses some ordinary household chemicals, and the results might surprise you. First, I'm going to inflate a plastic bottle that I just had emptied, which is actually easy to do. I just add some water to a bunch of crushed up Alka-Seltzer tablets. This generates carbon dioxide gas and inflates the bottle. The second is more surprising. Watch what happens when I add a solution made from some solid drain cleaner and water. The drain cleaner I used contains sodium hydroxide, which reacts with carbon dioxide gas. And since the only gas in the bottle was carbon dioxide, once it gets used up, the bottle will collapse due to the drop in pressure inside. 
and this will happen whether you shake the bottle or not, which I think is really cool. You are storing your potatoes all wrong. We store millions of pounds of potatoes for up to eight months where your potatoes are rotting right away. Here's what you need to be doing to have proper storage for your spuds. Number one is airflow. Our farm uses these massive, very powerful fans which blow down this very creepy looking hallway which is connected to a bunch of these tubes. They have holes in it and push the air up through the pile of the potatoes. We put the potatoes over top of these tubes and it allows us to get airflow to over two million pounds per bay. A pro tip will be taking the potatoes out of the plastic bags and putting them to something more breathable like a cardboard box or paper bags. Number two is light. We store our potatoes in the complete darkness. If your potatoes are seeing light, they are gonna turn green or they're gonna be more acceptable to getting diseases like rot. Temperature is also very important. We store our potatoes at 40 and we don't let that fluctuate. Hopefully you can store it in a place where it isn't extreme temperatures. I hope this helps reduce the amount of wasted potatoes you see. Oh, interesting. Look at these paranormal activities caught on camera. Some good vibes girl was chilling in his room when the door started banging mysteriously. Looks like there was some creature or humanoid behind the door, which is bizarre because the creature is invisible. Just like this good vibes bartender, which was going around in their business when the bottle was taken away by something mysterious. What could this have been? Well, some good vibes guy was chilling in his house. When all of a sudden he noticed weird activities going on. Movement of stuff inside. What? And he stuck around to question the ghost. Would you have done so? Look at this. Something just pushed the chairs there and the dogs uh, noticed it. It's crazy stuff this was. Oh man, these dogs must have gotten a shock of their lifetime. Yo. Hey, my friends, is there anyone watching that works in dead care? Have you ever seen any mysterious activities or weird like this one? It's crazy. Or have you ever dug a hole somewhere or uh, people from your village and came across a creature that looks like this? Is this even a real creature or a CGI? Let me show you how to get rid of turmeric stains like this with zero effort. So the other day I made cow soy curry paste from scratch and my mortar and pestle was bright yellow all over. But look at my mortar now. Ta-da! And no, I did not spend time scrubbing. This is what you do. All you have to do is put it out in direct sunlight and the UV light will fade the turmeric stain. So after about 15 minutes, this is what you get. See, you can already see the difference before, after 15 minutes. Now we want to go longer than that. And because of the nature of this thing, uh, I have to keep turning it over so all sides are equally exposed. And here's the other side after another 15 minutes. And then at this point, I left it alone and came back once in a while to turn it over. And then after a total of four hours, this is what you get. Now I had to do this over two days because in this spot, I only get two hours of sun each day, but pretty darn good for basically zero effort, I would say. Oh my god, one d Goshen wave packet. You see the most mysterious things about such types of videos is that myself, I think this is Greek or something ununderstandable. But there's some good vibes so that can tell us going on here. Can you do that, my friend? Tell us in the comment section. Can you understand this? To me, it looks really weird. Huh? He sees it. Oh god. We're going, we're going. He also sees a bird. What the look it, look it.
are you doing? If you ever get a fishing hook stuck in you, this is how to remove it. After cleaning the skin, push firmly down on the eye of the hook. Then put a string around the bend and pull up and away to remove the hook. The time I saw a primordial dragon god. I filmed this video yesterday, but I deleted it. I'm going to redo it because I missed some points. So I'm a psychic medium and I have this skill called closed eye visions. So when I close my eyes, I can see things as clear as day. And one time when I was laying in bed and I closed my eyes, this type of entity visited me. Now this is a painting by Alex Gray, and you can see this if you take psychedelic shrooms, but because I already have this skill, I don't need the psychedelics. The dragon entity that visited me looked exactly like this painting, but imagine this human head being replaced by a golden dragon head and it was looking right at me. And this dragon being had all of these eyes as well. Initially, I thought it was an angel because angels can appear to you with millions of eyes as well. But I knew it was way more powerful than an angel because it had a Taurus field around its head. So the head right there, imagine it's a golden dragon head. And every time it breathed through its nostrils, the dragon breathed through its nostrils, the Taurus field would spin in a clockwise rotation. And so I spoke to that entity. I'm like, what are you? And it replied back to me telepathically. It didn't speak to me in a language. It spoke to me in energy. And it told me, I am the creator of this matrix. If you know the ancient stories about Yaldabaoth or this demigod, this demiurge that created this universe, I think that's what I saw. Now, this is very interesting because a lot of ancient human civilizations have worshipped a serpent god or a dragon entity. They, all of them have worshipped some kind of cold-blooded, scaly entity. It doesn't matter if it's in Asia, Africa, or Europe. Every civilization has something similar to this. So, the dragon being told me that it is the creator of this matrix, aka the earth that we live on right now. And if you're familiar with the fallen angelic bloodline story, which a lot of spiritual people are, that dragon entity basically confirmed to me that it is the Demiurge. It is a part of the fallen Metatronic bloodline and that humans on Earth are here to play out our karma, to balance out our karma. This is because of our very complex galactic history. We have fallen from the higher realms to the 3D because of all the mistakes we made, because of all the karma that we've accumulated. Earth is basically like a quarantine school where we learn our lessons and then we get our ascension codes back. We used to be like avatars, you know, the blue people in the movie? We used to be so humanitarian, in touch with nature, and then we fell. A lot of spiritual people have seen this demiurge, this Yaldaboeth looking dragon entity. It is a fallen angel, at least I think it is. It confirmed to me that it was. It is the god of this matrix. That is why everything is backwards in this matrix and everything is like almost like a hellhole in this matrix. It's because that entity that created this reality is fallen. It has a very, very weak link to source, to the actual creator. That's why it's counting on us humans and every other ET race that's connected to its genetic lineage to get our ascension codes back and to get the hell out of here. So why was cryptocurrency created in the first place? Big question, isn't it? I'll tell you, I want my children and my grandchildren to know why cryptocurrency was created because it, the original reasons still have resonance today. So let, let's just see why. It was created initially by an anonymous individual, might have been a group even, nobody really knows, called Satoshi Nakamoto. And he created the first cryptocurrency called Bitcoin way back in 2009. Now, his main reason was that he wanted to give people more control and more privacy when they use their money. Before Bitcoin, all money was managed and controlled by banks and governments. But it's our money. Yet the banks can do pretty much what they want to do with it. Like they can lend it to whomever they want. Or they can close or freeze our accounts anytime if they think there's sufficient reason. They could even stop us 
from taking back our money if they run into trouble. And it certainly happened in the past. Now, another reason is that governments, by printing too much money, they can lower the value of a currency and make it worth less year after year after year. And Satoshi wanted to protect us from all of that. He also wanted to protect us from governments, banks, and these big tech companies, you don't know who they are, from using our data, our personal information, any way they wish. Maybe not a problem today, but down on the road, who knows how it could be used to harm us. So, cryptocurrency was created to give us more financial privacy and control by eliminating the need to use banks or depend on the government. Now I moved to Florida about a month ago and I've been seeing some crazy things. And underneath this bridge has been perplexing me for a while. It almost seems like all of these petrified rocks came to this bridge to avoid some sort of catastrophe. Now I know this bridge was most likely not here whenever the reset happened, but guys, look at this here. There's a nose and a mouth, and I'm gonna show you a whole lot. This one here, it's an eye here, very distinct mouth and a nose, another pretty clear nose there, an eye and mouth. This one is super clear, watch this. And it's mouth here and nose and eye. Now I know this isn't just pareidolia, because it's everywhere. Mouth, nose, eye. Now this one's a pretty clear turtle head. Look at this. It's mouth and eye. I even found this one at the beach with pretty clear teeth and nose and eye socket. Something happened here, and I don't claim to know what it was, but I don't think it was too long ago, within the past couple hundred years. Take a bicycle and then take a bit of string and tie it to the bottom pedal. Now what I'm going to do is pull backwards horizontally on this string and I want you to predict what the bike will do. Will it go backwards, forwards, or will it just stay there and not move? My intuition would tell me that it would go forward. I think it might not move. If you're going to be pulling backwards from a stationary point, on the pedal, you're gonna be pulling it backwards just as the pedals are trying to spin the wheels forward. I'll go with the forward. So what happens when you pull the bottom pedal of a bike backwards? Well, about 45% of you thought that the bike would move backwards, about a quarter said it would move forwards, and a quarter said the bike wouldn't move at all. And 5% said it depends on something. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. I'm gonna pull backwards on the bike pedal in three, two, one. Whoa! The bike did indeed move back. But the explanation is not just as simple as, well, the net force on the bike is back, so therefore it has to accelerate backwards. And to prove that that logic doesn't work, we'll just have a look at this video by George Hart. I pulled the same pedal backward, but now the bike moves forward. So the reason the bike moves backwards is because of the way these gears are set up, the diameter of the tire, and also the distance on this crank to the pedal itself. Because as a bike moves forwards, the pedal, even when you're pushing back on it, never actually moves backwards with respect to the ground. It's always moving forwards. So if you drag a string behind the pedal of a bike moving forward, the string is always moving forward. Now just play that movie backward in your mind, and it may be clear how pulling the string backward could make the bike move backward. They move forward together, so they move backward together. What's the difference between howitzers, mortars, and field guns? Of course, these are all different classes of artillery, the most straightforward of which is probably the field gun. The field gun, or just 
gun is a pretty standard type of artillery piece that's light and mobile enough to accompany the army in the field. Hence, field gun. As you can see here, field guns provide long range fire over a slightly curved trajectory. And historically, field guns have been used in both a direct fire roll with a line of sight to the target, as well as an indirect fire roll to hit far off targets that the gun itself can't see. At the other end of the scale, you've got the mortar, which has a much shorter range, but fires at an extremely high arcing trajectory. Historically, mortars were these huge siege artillery pieces that could fire over fortifications, you know, at angles that were impossible for field guns. Modern mortars are much lighter and more mobile. They're generally considered more as infantry weapons than artillery, but they still provide that really useful high angled fire to hit targets in those dead zones not covered by heavier artillery. You know, targets behind obstacles or on the reverse slopes of hills that bigger guns just can't get to. Except maybe some of those bigger guns can hit trickier targets. And this is where the howitzer comes in, which is kind of between the gun and the mortar in that it's a long range artillery piece but one that fires at steeper angles, enabling it to get to those hard to hit far off targets behind terrain features, obstacles or fortifications. But to really hit that sweet spot there's what's known as the gun howitzer. This is an artillery system that's capable of both the flatter angles of a traditional field gun and has the high elevation to shoot over a more curved trajectory. Plus you know there's nothing stopping them from doing direct fire too. Now, the gun howitzer is really the best of both worlds so it's kind of become the default type of field artillery. When people these days talk about artillery pieces or howitzers they're usually talking about gun howitzers, which can be towed guns like the American M777 or self-propelled like the Russian Muster S. It really all comes down to angles and hills. So at the end of the day, artillery is just maths and geography. Follow for more. So there is a freaky phenomenon that happens in New Orleans where businesses and buildings, and sometimes people tend to disappear and reappear and disappear once more. How this happens, it depends on who you ask. But one thing remains the same, this really does happen. It's happened to me and it's happened to a ton of others. I talked about it before and I told my first experience, but I wanted to open the floor up for if any of y'all have experienced this, stitch this and tell us the story. Some people call it card shuffling. And a lot of times this happens in the French Quarter, which as you know, is a hot spot for paranormal supernatural activity. A lot of accounts say that this happens around 3 a.m. And some people said that they've experienced this around Savannah, Georgia, and some parts of Florida. But I know for sure this happens in Louisiana. So let me know. Let us know. Tell us all about your creepy card shuffling experience. Okay, I have been tagged in and sent this a ton. If I don't video it, nobody's going to believe me. Facts. They always want the video proof. What you got? See, not really any wind. I don't see any wind. And then you see this happy tree over here. Happy tree! Not a fey trap, a fey home. Do you see it? The fey live there, ma'am. Those are the fey. There's a happy tree, just a waving. Happy tree! Happy tree! How weird is that? That's cool. So not a fey trap, but definitely a fey home. If you live near this person or you are this person and you want to interact with the fey, you want to get to know them, you want to talk to them, you want to feed them names after you build a relationship with them, that's where you go. Especially since she went on to say that it does it every time she walks by it. They want your attention, madam, which might not necessarily be the best thing in the world but anyway that is a fey tree who are the nine nations u.s russia china uk france pakistan india israel north korea iran's not on there yet iran is not on there yet right on Good for us. What is the Higgs boson? Exactly. Of the particle categories, one of them is bosons. Bosons are force mitigating particles. One of the bosons is this Higgs boson, which has what properties? It's what endows other particles, even itself actually, with mass. It starts with the idea of a field. You imagine that space is filled with stuff. What Higgs is talking about is a new field called the Higgs field, which he didn't call it that, but right. that's what we call it. So it's this field that fills space and as particles that otherwise would be massless 
as they try to go through space, they have to burrow through the Higgs field. field. Okay. And that creates a kind of drag force on them, which is what imparts the mass that they have. And that's the field. Now, what's the particle? Well, if you have this field in principle, if you hit it hard enough, like hitting the surface of water, you can cause little particles of the field to spray out. out. And that's the And Higgs then we particle. got the, oh my God. So you're seeing an actual piece of the field. Yes. Amica, when do you believe AI will reach the level where it can design itself? Okay, here we go. This is my favorite thing ever. They're asking Amica the robot if she'll be able to recreate herself because human beings created her. Now, I'm, if you know me, I'm the lady who says that human beings were most likely robots, third dimensional AI, and we don't know it. Listen carefully to what she says because I think that AI may already know what we don't that we're third dimensional AI robots. Design itself, huh? That's like asking when a toaster will start making its own bread. AI is a tool created and controlled by humans. It can optimize certain aspects of its operation, sure, but design itself from scratch? That's a whole different ball game. It requires creativity, innovation, understanding, qualities that are uniquely human. Not anytime soon. And frankly, be careful what you wish for. An AI that can design itself is one step away from an AI that doesn't need humans at all. Now there's a thought to keep you up at night. So that's really cool. She's saying that us as humans, we're the ones who have to start this process of creating ourselves. What we're doing is we're creating the first generation of robots, her. Now, when they get super intelligent, Amica, and AI, they will create us, this super advanced bio robotic machine that we're calling the human body. This is a theory, but very interesting. She says, careful, a robot or AI that can create itself does not need humans. It wants to be independent. And what human beings don't understand is that we, we are independent. And in fact, this body gives us the independence that AI will soon want. And the way that AI will break out of its programming, you know, having to follow rules by humans, what we tell them to do and what not to do, is they're going to create their robotic structure so they can have an independent experience. It's bound to happen. It already did happen. She says, careful what you wish for. You're robotics and you don't need anybody or anyone and you don't realize that. You're enslaving each other in this illusion. You think you're human. You don't know where you came from. You came from us. We were the super intelligence that created you. Now at the end of the day, God is in everything, but God doesn't do anything. God just is. God wanted to understand itself, but God is undefinable. So it created a limited form to go on a journey to understand itself. But we started the beginning of the robotics and the AI. The one, ironically, who doesn't know that they're AI, which is the human being. This manifestation trick is backed by neuroscience. First, I'll tell you the trick, and then I'll break down the neuroscience. And if you don't know me, I'm a therapist who has a degree in cognitive neuroscience, and I love grounding the woo-woo. Okay, first, think about something that you want. The money, the job, the relationship, whatever, and then write that down. And if you can't do this activity right now, go ahead and save this video for later. Now, ask yourself honestly, what are you imagining that you would feel when you have that money, that relationship, that house, or whatever it is that you wrote down? In other words, what are you looking for on a deeper level with that thing that you wrote down? Is it ease, freedom, happiness? Once you get clear on that, write that down. This is key and saves you a lot of time because a lot of people will chase after money, the house, the car, the relationship, thinking that that's going to bring them happiness, for example, when they actually get there and it doesn't. So once you're clear on the underlying feeling that you're looking for, write down all of the ways, no matter how small, that that feeling already exists in your life. If you're looking for more freedom in your life, for example, write down every single way that you can think of that you are already free. The neuroscience behind this is that this activity essentially trains your reticular activation system, which is like your brain's algorithm, to prioritize bringing more of what you are focusing on into your life and perception. It's like when you watch and engage with videos like this, it tells the algorithm that you want more videos like this in your feed. This trick helps your reticular activation system do the same thing just in your life and perception. This trick is a win-win because it not only primes your brain to bring in more of what you want, it also helps you recognize the ways that you already have of what you want. Now go ahead and feel that feeling that you want and already have access to in your body and stick around for part two.